Hey, welcome back to Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5. Don't forget, this weekend it is the Houston Dynamo in action in the playoffs against the, uh, well, not the Portland Timbers. We've already disposed of them. It's Real Salt Lake and Pablo Mastroeni coming in. Uh, joining us now, courtesy of LamontBrands.com. That's where you get Soccer Matters t-shirts and hats, all to benefit the 501c charity Snowdrop Foundation. Former U.S. international, currently in Apple TV broadcaster marcelo babo and marcelo thanks for coming on buddy i was excited i thought you were gonna say lamar donuts we were sponsored by <laughs> lamar donuts i was like let's go <laughs> i hear you all right so we got some playoffs i want to run through a number of topics here uh major league soccer okay but i first want to just toss out to you give me two of the biggest storylines in your mind this year in the <clears> league. <throat> could be anything could be a player could be a coach could be a team um, let's see. Danny Bawanga, I think is huge after what LAFC did last year, not playing as a nine. That's what gets me. He's not a number nine. He's a seven or an 11, a winger who has scored 20 goals on a season. So I think that's a huge storyline. Number two, I'm not even going to touch the playoffs. LA galaxy, LA galaxy, not making the playoffs and having to rebuild again. And really, um, I think everybody's waiting to see what they do, because if not, there's another job on the line. Marcelo Balboa joining us. All right. So that's, that's a perfect segue Marcelo into the teams that didn't make the playoffs. And I'm going to say this, and I say this respectfully, some bad teams made the playoffs because there are 18 <laughs> spots available. So I say it respectfully, Look, we're here to analyze. We're not here to hold back. Do I want to ask you which ones you think shouldn't be there. Uh, well, I would go to eight and nine, <laughs> but actually sporting Kansas city, I would be a little bit different on them. They've, they've risen after a really okay. rough start. And okay. that's because of, you know, Peter Vermees, but look, here are the teams that didn't make it this year, Montreal, New York city, FC, DC, Chicago, Miami, and Toronto. All right. Uh, I mean, there's unbelievable stories and expenditures with some of those teams. Portland doesn't win out Minnesota, Austin, LAFC, Colorado. Um, which one of those teams that I just mentioned jumps out to you as maybe the biggest epic fail, not making the playoffs. Cause look, 63% oh. of the teams make the playoffs. You don't make the playoffs. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, yeah. it, that's rough and you should yeah. be held to the fire. Um, I'm going to say this, every single team that didn't make the playoffs, um, should be held accountable for their, for what happened this year. Um, I, I'll put, even even Miami, because if they wouldn't have brought in Messi, Jordy, and uh, Busquet, they would have been a last place team. They'd have been worse than Toronto. Am I wrong? Do you feel the same way? Yeah, they got a major boost from those. Yeah, guys. they got a major boost from those guys. They Unfortunately, it wasn't really an MLS because at that point, I no, think but it's okay. gas ran out. Buddy, a trophy is a trophy, and I think they put all their energy into that tournament, which is great. Winning a trophy and winning League's Cup is is. Open's got a lot of doors for them next year, and we know they're going to retool. But um, there, there's a bunch of teams that I would be concerned about, and only because if they decide to jack up the salary cap another two to three million dollars, if they decide to add another international slot, uh, some of these teams don't use those those slots, so they could be left behind even more. So, but I would think for me, it always goes back to the giant on the hill, LA galaxy with all the championships they did. Uh, they have a lot of pressure. They were the team that everybody thought was going to make the playoffs, the players they brought in, what happened with Chris Klein, uh, injuries here and there. I think, uh, I don't give them a buy. I just gave them a little bit more rope and that rope is very thin right now for the LA galaxy. I think Greg Vanny returns. Greg Vanny returns. Greg Vanny returns, but I think if there happens to be a slow start, if they're not in a playoff position by all-star game, I think we could see some changes there quickly. Chicago continues to be in a real struggle. Um, they got a star player there in a DP and Shakiri, yep. but they yep. still continue to struggle in a great soccer market. And they got to find a coach, though. I think knowing Frankie, uh, I, I, I know Frankie took the job. I'm not sure Frankie wants to be a head coach the whole time. So I think they need to, and they're interviewing for head coaches. So I think they need to find a head coach. And I think they just need to find the right players to go around your stars. 
Um, but for me, it always starts with the right coach that brings in the right mentality that can change the culture. And, and we saw what Steve Trundolo did at, at LA. We've seen what a few coaches have done along the league. Look what Lucci has done for San Jose. So I think bringing the, the, the proper coach for that organization and the right players is something they got to get right this year. All right, Lucci and San Jose. Does San Jose deserve to be in the playoffs? I know they do based on where they ended up record-wise, but really, as a team. Yes. They just seem to hover around the same level every you year. Know what? They but, just, but the, they just but don't the platform. Is, but, Glenn, but the problem is, is for the last four years with Almeida, we've seen them go up, we've seen them go down. We've seen them go up, and we see them go down. In order to have a chance to make the playoffs, you got to be consistent. You've got to be steady. And – He's he's steadied the ship. He's changed their mentality. They're playing with a little bit more joy. They're playing with a little bit more structure. And when you do that, you can fight to get into the playoffs. And that's what Lucci's brought to that group. I'm not saying Lucci's going to win a championship with San Jose. But they've settled the ship, and now they can get maybe a few better rowers that can help row this boat a little quicker up down the stream. And that's what I think Lucci has done to that group. He's done a nice job. He's Marcelo Balboa joining us, former U.S. international. Okay, so we we mentioned all these teams that didn't make the playoffs, and I want to make it very clear here that, you know, we just can't bag on coaches, right? We we have to look at the overall ownership oh, of those players, groups. Players, and, owners, everything. And, and, and say to ourselves, are they really investing in their team? Are they really competing? And do they believe in meritocracy, or are they just – you know, parking themselves there and hoping a coach is going to work magic uh, uh, with maybe a roster that isn't a big, you know, isn't a big expenditure. And we put on a good face. Uh, I think there's a lot of those teams. And I think Houston's a great example of a change in ownership, more investment in players and staff. And things have come good here um, for the for now. And they look like a dangerous team heading into the playoffs. Toronto FC, huge investment in the team. And an absolute nightmare of a season. No, but I think uh, I, I'll say it anyway. I think they made a bad choice in hiring Bob Bradley at the beginning of the year. Okay. And I say that because there comes a point where you need uh, fresh ideas. You need to modernize the game a little bit. And I don't think he did that. Um, I think now they've steadied the ship. They've got themselves a coach for the future. Uh, he's going to turn that team around. I could see that team going from worst team in MLS to a playoff team next year and possibly fighting for uh, maybe a Leagues Cup, maybe a U.S. Open Cup. I'm not going to say an MLS Cup because I don't know what players are going to bring in yet, but I think they're going to do something special. Um, I think Michael Bradley retiring, he's had a great career. I think that's going to open up a, a salary, uh, a big salary spot for them to go get some players. So I think that I think they they have the best opportunity to turn this thing around quickly. All right, John Herdman though, who's <clears> going <throat> to become the coach. Remember, he's never coached a team on a daily basis at this level. He's been national team women's in Canada, national team men, and we all know there's a big difference in coaching national teams and doing a team on a daily basis. Yeah, but Glenn, you coached women and you won. You were successful. Were you not? Silver medal, all these gold. Then he takes over the men. And how long since 1986 they qualified for the World Cup? And not in second place, not in third place. They were the best team in CONCACAF, my friend. Now, if you can transition from men, from women to men, men now to men in MLS coaching every day, it's just another extension of what he does every day. So now it's just a matter of finding the right players. So I think he's proven he could coach at every level. So now why not MLS? Okay. I, no, I'm just saying it's a different animal. That's all. I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, all right. So let's move on. We're talking to Marcelo Balboa here. We got, we got sporting Kansas city and San Jose on Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, as much as I know you're pushing Lucha Gonzalez, I'm picking sporting Kansas city at home with Peter Vermees. I I'm neutral. I have no, I have no, uh, I have no dog in the fight. So um, I think San Jose is playing well. Wait a minute. You're an analyst. You can't be neutral. I, sure I can. I have, my, my team, my team got knocked out of the playoff a month and a half ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I think Peter's done a nice job. And I think people who were asking for Peter Vermes to be fired at the beginning of the year, 
are probably a little embarrassed right now because we all know what Peter can do. We know what kind of coach Peter is, and we know he'll find a way to turn things around, and he did. And he yeah. got him back on the board. He uh, got him a home game in the wild card game. I think they're going to be very difficult to beat at home, especially – you know how every year you find that one team that wins that one key game that gets you into the playoffs and then they make a run? I think that Sporting KC could be that that team in uh, in the West. Yeah, they're dangerous. I consider yeah. them a dangerous animal like the Houston yep. Dynamo. And yep. uh, if they uh, the winner of that game, Sporting Kansas City and San Jose will get St. Louis, which yep. is a remarkable story as an expansion team. Yep. Um, does anybody have a better pressing game than St. Louis City? Um, yeah, that's a that's a good question. I'm thinking of the teams in the playoffs. I'll tell you R- what. RSL, you know, RSL, we all have small nice sample shot. sizes. We're not watching. No, but we're not watching 14, 15 games a week. No. But I saw them come into Houston and do something to the Dynamo yeah. that hadn't happened all year, and that was yeah dominate them for the first 25 minutes of the first the dynamo could not get out of their own half because of their pressing game it was highly impressive they're they're listen they're dangerous now because klaus is back they're they're a very dangerous team i think rsl does a nice job of pressing they do a really nice job of pressing and pushing but um listen you can press as much as you want but if you can't finish you're not going to win games so that's i think where they struggled a little bit against seattle they kind of hit a hiccup, uh, St. Louis, right before they hit the playoffs with Seattle. So that can either motivate you or it could, you know what I mean? I think the nerves of playing the first game in St. Louis could be interesting. I'm excited for that group, but uh, I think St. Louis, for me, is the the biggest surprise of the year because I didn't know much about them. I didn't know what they had. And, uh, and now you look at the way they play. Now they got Klaus back. This is a healthy team. They they can make some uh, some noise in this playoff race. Glad you brought him up because they made great signings right up the middle of the team. Roman yep. Berkey in goal, as good as there is yep. in MLS. Edward Leuven in, in midfield, and then Klaus as a center forward. So um, I, I think you're right on there. Houston, Real Salt Lake. Uh, Real Salt Lake is really beat up, um, really beat up. Injury. I'm going to say what I, I'm going to say what I said yesterday. We did the uh, LAFC podcast with Max Bredo. Um, I will be shocked if Houston doesn't reach MLS Cup this year. They are playing some of the most attractive soccer. They seem to be riding on a different wave right now, Glenn. They're smiling. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Um, I I would be very surprised if Houston. I have them. And I have them in Cincinnati, I believe I put in the uh, in the final for MLS Cup. Actually, I take that back. I had um, I had Houston and Orlando in the final. So yeah, that's how I, good I think they are right now, Houston. Yeah, and having watched them very very closely, obviously being a commentator, um, yeah. everything has fallen together. They they have yeah. momentum now. They have confidence. They're playing for each other. Um, I, no big I injuries, which is huge. No big injuries yep. to the starting 11. So. Got a nice break. Yeah. Um, and they got the MVP of the league, in my opinion, in Hector Herrera, with all due respect to Buanga. Um, all right. LAFC in Vancouver. Speaking of uh, Buanga, uh, it's got to be LAFC for me. Uh, I, I got to be honest with you. I said it yesterday, too. I think this game, all three games will go to PKs. I think okay. it's that tight of a race because Vela can't, Vela can't push your back line further back. You know what I'm saying? As a center forward, as playing as a nine. So that means the two center backs can squeeze in a little bit more. And that could press LA and make it difficult for them. But when you do that, the ball over the top, which we've seen LAFC do quite a bit, a very direct ball to Bawanga over the top with Bogus in the midfield with Ilya Sanchez. I said yesterday, the, the, to me, the key will be Ilya Sanchez. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. Because if Ilya Sanchez sits and plays as a free defender in front of the two center backs that's going to leave room for vancouver to play and you don't want vancouver to play through the midfield if Ilya steps up and marks a little bit and helps mark in that midfield i think la will win the series brian gold and uh, brian white have to come good for vancouver and i don't think people are afraid of lafc like i mean before people were terrified yeah i don't think so anymore um okay we got to put this in overdrive seattle dallas I don't know who the fulcrum of Dallas is. Don't tell me it's Jesus Ferreira because he's their center forward. No. Yeah. And Seattle's got the wise old man and Brian Schmetzer. 
Uh, you know what? Dallas has always given Seattle a hard time. If if there's going to be an upset, it could be in that. But I think Seattle rides that one and gets into the next round. All right. Eastern Conference, Red Bulls and Charlotte. I mean, for me, Red Bulls team and Red is Bulls. an aesthetically good watch for me. I, I don't like Red watching Bull, either of these teams. Red Bull at Red Bull Arena. I can see them pulling out the high pressing octane that they like to do. I could see them pulling off a one nothing win and moving on to the next round. Okay, so two average teams there, in my opinion. Uh, one of them, though, will have the uh, ability to get FC Cincinnati, which under Pat Noonan is an amazing story. Great story. I got to do their game against Atlanta. But I'll tell you this, though. In transition, they're wide open. In transition, playing three in the back, they've got caught quite a few times from Atlanta. And the only reason I don't think Atlanta could have probably won that game is because Almada like a knucklehead, kicks kicks Powell or kicks Dominic Baji off the ball and gets a second yellow card. Now Atlanta plays with uh, with uh, 10 players. I think Atlanta will be a team that's going to be very dangerous in the playoffs. Yeah, and uh, you you brought up the former Rapid, Dominic Baji, who has yes. been on a few teams in MLS. And, yes. Uh, Pace will get you contracts, I think, right? Very much so. And uh, By the way, you brought up uh, Tiago Almada. And, of course, uh, he is a part of the Columbus-Atlanta series. By the way, Almada yeah. with uh, 19 assists led yeah. Major League Soccer. Uh, that's a great that's a great matchup right there, yeah. those two teams. Yeah, I think both both are, are, are very attractive the way they play, the way they knock it around. And, uh, I, listen, all, all Atlanta has to do is go get a result. Just go find a result in Columbus. And you can take it back home. They're difficult to play at home. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is it will be packed. So that that one to me is a toss-up. Either either team could win, and there's no upset there. Let's go to Philadelphia and New England. Philadelphia also. I I don't know if they have the same bite as they did last year. And then New England had the controversy with Bruce Arena uh, being removed as the coach, uh, and and kind of they cleaned house up there. How do you yeah. see that one? Um, even. To be honest with you, I, I've, I did Philadelphia a few weeks ago. They're struggling a little bit uh, in transition and transition moments. When you look at New England, I think the burden of not having Bruce Serena, we know what Bruce can do on the sideline, uh, the way he reads the game, the way his subs are made, that uh, it could be difficult for, for New England. But uh, I can see Philadelphia winning that, group, that, uh, that series. By the way, I heard Bruce Arena lobbied the league to apply for the job at D.C. Any thoughts on that? I still think we need some wise old men coaching teams in Major League it, it, Soccer. They do it in South America. Why can't we yeah. do it here? Well, here's my problem. Glenn. I don't know what happened with Bruce and, and New England. We haven't heard every story. But uh, you know what? It's nothing like Bruce Arena going back to D.C. and trying to turn that program around. They need a little bit of help. Um, I think Bruce is good for the league. I love his – his crappy attitude sometimes the way he talks to people. <laughs> and let's yeah. be honest, he's so grumpy sometimes. Oh, yeah. But it's you're right. It's nice to have a guy that's a veteran like that coaching in this league. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I hope I hope he's back. Uh, Orlando <clears throat> and Nashville and Oscar Perea continuing to do great things against Gary Smith, who you know very well from his time yeah. in Colorado. I know both. I'm fortunate enough. I think this is Oscar's year. I think we've seen Oscar do well getting to a conference semifinal. Getting here, I think this is the year that he has to push that envelope over the top and or push that cart over the top of the hill and get to a final with the group he has. He's got a good group. He's in second place. There's not a lot of people paying attention to him, but we all know the crafty Nashville low block, hit the long ball into Mukhtar and see what they can create. So, I, I you know what? I, again, I think the hardest series is, is the Orlando-Nashville game. I think that's going to be very, very, very difficult for both teams. Some great matchups. It's been a great year in Major League Soccer. Marcelo, as always, thank you for coming on. That was fun volleying those games around and getting some <laughs> comments in or around all these teams. Great stuff. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Former U.S. International Marcelo Balboa. Also, he knows a little bit about the run to the MLS Cup getting there with the Colorado Rapids back in the day. Uh, we'll take a break here. Soccer Matters ESPN 97.5 presented by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm. Big reminder here, uh, great soccer watching pub. It's Hugh O'Connor's pub. It's out on I-10 in the Marquee Entertainment Center. Go in there and say hello to Dave and Goose. Big whiskey offering, big beer offering. They got all the pub food. And by the way, it's got that kind of real pub feel to it. 
Uh, and it's nice and clean too, which is sometimes not always <laughs> what you get with a good pub, but a big thank you to Hugh O'Connor's pub. Uh, we'll take a break here. We'll come back. We got a lot more to go.